everyone! Welcome to the Geet Builds Halloween Special. I am Geet, and this time lapse, I'm going to be making the vampire castle you just saw, and then a dark gothic village to match it. I've spent the last month working on this map, first looking for concept art for spooky castles, finding the perfect tree schematics and creating the map and world painter, and then building everything over the span of more than 60 hours. The area of the whole map is 4 million blocks. There's a ring of mountains going around the edge, streams and rivers throughout the map, and a huge cliff that the castle is built on, overlooking a swamp with dead trees and gnarled willows. So the castle itself is split into two parts. To match the Halloween spirit, the first section of the castle that I'm working on now is heavily inspired by Bran Castle, the real life castle that Dracula's castle is based on. I tried to mimic the layout and major features of the castle, while making it fit my style in Minecraft. As usual, I started with different colored wools, which makes it easy to make out the layout of the castle first, quickly adjust anything that doesn't look quite right, and once I'm happy with how the bare bones of the castle look, I can quickly transform it into a mix of blocks to give the walls more texture. Mostly, that's different dead brain coral blocks, but the layout in this part of the castle is really cramped, so to prevent everything from running together, I make a few of the buildings a granite and bricks texture. I like the dead brain coral blocks a lot for this build, since they have a darker tan brown color from afar, opposed to the gray color of stone bricks and cobblestone. To make the castle a bit spookier, I try to add spikes to the roof wherever possible, made of walls, fences, and iron bars, and create spires rising from the peaks of buildings using lodestones and cobblestone stairs and slabs. I went with different brown blocks for the roofs of the grey buildings, and black blocks for the roofs of the granite buildings to give the castle a dark, heavy feel. The most recognizable part of Castle Bran is the tall main tower that soars above the rest of the castle. I do my best to recreate its shape as accurately as I can, but definitely embellish the tower with larger windows and arches that aren't in the real castle. To liven up the castle, I'll go back through and add red and black plants and bushes, since it felt right that vampires would choose the creepiest flowers to landscape with. I use invisible barrier blocks to make some fountains, and then add a few stairways leading into the crypts in the ground. Once that's done, I hang lanterns from chains for light and make the ground chiseled nether bricks and blackstone. The front side of the castle has a cliff sticking way out, so I built another tower sticking down with a long, pointed roof poking towards the ground. With that, the Bran Castle part of the build was done, so I got to work connecting it to the main cliff that the rest of the castle would be built on. I wanted the bridge connecting the different parts of the castle to be equally large and impressive as the rest of the build. It's made of different levels of arches, and almost every part of the bridge is curved in some way to give the whole thing an elegant feel. I finished the top of the bridge with another series of arches with spikes and spires mixed in to make the bridge a bit more evil and intimidating. Moving on from the bridge to the front section of the castle, I again start out by drawing the outline to get a bearing of where everything will go and where the sight lines will be. I wanted the best view of the castle to be from the village side, so I try to create a blueprint with lower towers on that side with plenty of space between them, and taller towers as you go towards the other side of the castle so that the whole build has a lot of depth and can be seen from far away. I start building up with the front gatehouse, and incorporate a new roof structure that's square and quickly slopes up to meet in the middle. Since this part of the castle is bigger and more spaced out than the castle brand section, I stick with one color scheme of dead coral blocks and blackstone roofs. I realized pretty quickly that I had overestimated how big the cliff was and how much room I had to work with. To really lean into the vampire aesthetic, I wanted to include a crypt set into the ground with mausoleums and tombs where the vampire coffins would be, so to make space for that, I moved the whole castle over to the back right. Part of the castle hangs off the cliff since I had to move the whole layout, so I build the rock up and out to meet the base of the castle. I then build the walls of the castle up 20 blocks or so to get a sense of the shape and size of the build. I designed this part of the castle to have lots of wide, open section of wall that I could add cleaner details to. I usually like to over-detail my builds a little bit, but it can make a build feel noisy or too busy when too much detailing gets done. So to avoid that in this build, I focus more on using depth to create strong, orderly lines through the use of stairs, slabs, and wall blocks. When seen up close, the build still has detail, but doesn't become a jumbled mess when seen from afar. I also tried to have most of the lines going up instead of side to side, which makes everything feel taller and more vertical. I was already pretty close to max height with the cliff, so making the castle feel taller than it actually is was important for the scale to feel correct. A short, stubby gothic castle just really wouldn't look right, especially since this part of the castle needed to be noticeably bigger than the castle brand section. To give the whole thing more depth, I used a lot of variation in tower height, which also keeps the castle from looking too uniform. There's shorter towers with roofs that go straight to the top of the castle, and there's tall towers with multiple different roof lines and heights going up it. Over on the back side of the castle, there's a lot of ground that didn't get covered within the walls of the build, so I eventually make those areas balconies with supports running through the air down to the cliff below it. I decided that I liked the dark red and black color scheme of the floor that I used on Castle Bran, so anything that should be walked on I changed to those blocks, which helps make the castle feel dark and brooding. To mix things up a bit, and add a little bit of a weird, fancy element to the castle, I designed the main tower at the back to be made of red stained glass, supported by an outer network of walls and braces running up to the upper section of the tower. At the top, I make an extremely sloped roof that goes to the max build height, surrounded by four smaller towers around the edge. 
All in all, the side of the castle is way taller than the front side, so I tried to give the towers wider bases to keep everything feeling real, and to prevent these weirdly tall towers from shooting from the ground directly into the sky. Finally, I add a few more bridges soaring through the air from tower to tower since it's always something I think is cool in a castle build. Going back to the front gatehouse, I decide that an open gate will look cooler than the door, so I go ahead and make that change. The first thing I do to make the crypts is dig out a long hole in the ground, and then design the first mausoleum. I copy and paste it a few times around the edge, add a few doors leading into hollowed out sections in the ground, and change the floor to that nether brick and blackstone texture. For decoration, I add more flower boxes and gardens filled with roses and other red bushes and plants, and complete the inside of all the tombs with open coffin designs. In the caves and the cliff beneath the castle, I add weeping vines for a spooky, creepy feel, and then add a little garden design out in front of the castle. The last thing I do with the castle is add slabs down the whole road leading to the rest of the map to make it way easier to walk up. And with that, the vampire castle part of this build was done. All the spikes and spires pointing out of the roof really give it that dark, gothic feel, and the castle feels so tall and intimidating that it really dominates the landscape all around it. It looks even scarier at night with shaders on, but we'll get to that later. The next part of the Halloween map was building the nearby village that the vampires would prey upon. I start with a gothic cathedral built on a hill slightly above the rest of the village. I thought about changing the color scheme, but decided against it since I like the darker vibes that the dead coral blocks have and didn't want the village to feel any less spooky than the castle. I give the cathedral a lot of windows and buttresses, and then create a graveyard in front, with dozens of graves surrounding a central open mausoleum. For the village, I build six different gothic mansions and switch between using the brick and granite texture and the dead coral texture to add even more variation to the buildings. A few of the buildings that are originally brick and granite, I convert to the dead coral texture, and vice versa. So even though there's only six different mansion blueprints, it feels like there's an additional three or four unique buildings around the village. I place the mansions first, then go back through after to build paths and fields of crops and pumpkin patches around them. Then add fenced in front courtyards with overgrown gardens and fountains in front of each house, and place even more of the huge spruce tree schematics around the village to blend the town into the forest surrounding it. I built a few small, arched bridges connecting the paths over the river and continued landscaping the village. When you're walking the paths of the village, I want you to always know that you're in the town, but still feel at any moment a werewolf or a vampire could lunge out to get you. So I made sure there was plenty of space between the buildings, then added mossy cobblestone walls at random alongside the road to slightly obscure your view into the forest, and then packed as many trees as I could between the buildings to make it feel like you really never left the hidden unknowns of the forest. I place lampposts along the road, but leave no space between them though there's always a bit of darkness you have to pass through when getting from one lamp to the next. With the mansions and cathedral built, the trees and pumpkin patches added, and all the lampposts placed, the spooky gothic village was also completed. So if you made it this far into the video, make sure to leave a like to let YouTube know that other people should see this video too. And if you're not subscribed already, make sure to do so, and turn on notifications so that YouTube will actually let you know when I post. I'm really happy with how the map turned out, and I think it looks really good during the day. But the map really shines at night, so for the next few minutes, I'm going to go on a spooky nighttime tour from the cathedral, make my way through the village, walk along the forest road, and finally explore the gothic castle to find Dracula's personal keep.
So I really hope you enjoyed the video. As always, the map is up for download on Planet Minecraft, and a link to that is in the description below. Let me know if you explore around it yourself. And if you like these holiday themed maps, leave a comment and I'll try and do more like this in the future. I hope you have an extra spooky Halloween, and I'll see you next time. Peace.